thing, it stops T wave over sensing, but occasionally, and it's reason it's not it's not I wouldn't say it's rare, okay, occasionally it will boost diaphragmatic signals. Okay? And then you'll get this under this over sensing coming through. And the device will alert, you will not get an inappropriate therapy. You may get cessation of pacing for a period of time. I haven't met a patient yet who's symptomatic because they're straining, okay, and then they might feel a bit like dizzy and then they stop straining. So it will only happen when they're straining. Okay? They stop straining, it's gone. The meter. Is it safe to keep the LFA deactivated? It is safe to keep. The, is it safe to turn off LFA? This is a consideration that the used physicians would have to have. So if you turn off LFA, remember what might happen: your T waves might come up and your R wave might come down. Okay? So you would need to look at the signal. Look. I mean, that's that's fine. But there's no T wave. So I'm comfortable to leave LFA off in this patient, okay? So you might want to turn it off on, on a small number of patients. It's, it's reasonably rare to turn it off, okay? But the, the, the problem is, with the, 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 the issue is, is that when, a, when, when some physicians see this, it's a broken lead. In their, their, in their mind, this is a broken lead, and now they want to change the lead, okay? And this is not exclusive to Abbott, by the way. Um, here's some examples of lead noise. This is the patient getting a shock here, right? So this patient is in, well, what rhythm is this patient in? This is the atrial channel, this is the near field V, this is the far field V. This patient is in AV block shock. Did you test this with ventilators, mechanical ventilators? Mechanical ventilators? Yes. Did you test the, 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 the fragment? Oh, okay, no, no, no. No, I mean, I, I, no, no, we haven't That's an interesting thing. We haven't tested it. This is not an Abbott device. This is not an Abbott device. This is a Boston device. Yes, I was going yeah. to. So this is a Boston device, okay? So there's no comparator between the near field and the far field, okay? But if you think about it, if this was a secure sense, had a secure sense device, it would say fast here, slow here, don't do it. Leave them alone. Leave them alone and tell the hospital about it, okay? But here the patient gets shocked and then falls off the toilet. Um, and then this is an example. This is. The, I just want to show you that it's not just an R device, right? This here is. A, this is the atrial lead here. This is the ventricular lead. There's no far field on here. Look at it. It's low amplitude, high frequency. This is muscle. This is the diaphragm. It's not pectoralis muscle. Okay. No. That's, that's sometimes people think. Oh, could it be the pectoralis muscle? I'm going to go back. If this was pectoralis muscle. This. This here. Will be covered with it, right? Yeah. Because it that's be in the, in the pectoralis circuit, yeah. right? Peak, yeah. yeah, it has to be on far field, okay? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, this lead got extracted. This is one of the leads. Uh, this is a this is a Medtronic device, right? Yeah. This lead got and it picks it up as a. Um, uh, yeah. It would, yeah. Well, it picked up this picked up as a non-sustained VF. Mm -hmm. You're attaching the competition. Oh, really? I, 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 we have it as well. Look, look, hang on, look, look, there we are. We have it. They have it. It's more. It's more that you don't want to extract this lead, right? Yeah. You as a physician, there's a mortality risk that comes with extraction of a lead, right? Infection risk, everything, right? This lead was extracted. Put a new lead in. Two months later. You got the symptom. You got this back again. Yeah. Oof. That's horrible. Yeah. But that's why I'm showing you because I want to show you what it looks like from different manufacturers. It looks the same, right? Yeah. It's that characteristic low frequency. So with this patient here, what I would have done, I'd have brought him in, I'd have made him strain hard, and I'd have looked at that, and then if I saw this, I'd go diaphragm. Mm -hmm. You would, you still want to, you still want to exclude a broken lead because it could be a, an insulation defect could potentially show up a little bit like this, potentially. But an insulation defect up here, so then you're picking up diaphragmatic uh, pectoralis muscle could potentially pick up, right? So you would want to do testing. If I have a screw that's not very well screwed in, yeah. would that do something like that? Um, <laughs> Just going in and out. Typically. A loose head screw. Uh, yeah, no, typically you get bigger signals. Bigger signals. You get a sense of fire uh, to make it happen. Consider trying to normal head okay? But then make sure that it doesn't boost the T-bay from life. Yeah. What's this then? That's the this, is this is far field. That's, oh, that's this far field. is a. That's the MI. That's the MI. That's the MI. Not surgery. No, look, the V is clean, right? If this is due to surgery, this is, this is a, if this is due to surgery, 
Yeah. Electric quarter, it gets everything, right? Yeah. All the channels, even the surface yeah. ECG's gone, right? The RV's clean. So that's not EMI. That's not EMI. It is EMI. But it's not on the RV. The taps. It's on the taps. Oh, so that is this. far away. He's doing this. It's going up here, superior to take the EMI. Yeah, it's not going here. If he's yeah. holding the taps, yeah? Like this, this going up here, doesn't yeah, it? Doesn't go, then you put your foot on the tap, exactly. Put your foot no, on the no, tap, no, then it's a problem. If, if, you, if you're barefooted, you could have actually gone yeah, back. Yeah, well, if you're barefoot on a wooden floor, okay, that's, that's something. You know, if you're barefoot on a metal floor connected to, I mean, you want to, you, you're something wrong with your house, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you have electric current running in the floor, he's dead. Maybe in Egypt. Yeah. yeah. Could be in Egypt, it doesn't have wooden floors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it'd have to be, yeah. 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 So this, this is what this is, is uh, <coughs> this is a superiorly detected electromagnetic interference, right? So this patient just touches something with his hands. We don't know what it is. It's hard to find out what it is. It's almost impossible to find out what it is. Because you, you, you see the patient in the clinic and you say, what were you doing on the 7th of November last year? <laughs> I never remember. He doesn't remember what he wanted to do for breakfast. Exactly, exactly. So that's the MI. I have to leave, we have a meeting. No, no problem. Nice yeah. to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We learned a lot, and uh, my fellows also learned a lot, and we wish to see you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So, what's this one then? This, is, um, this noise here. This is an RV lead. So, this is, this is, a, this is a patient really well connected with names. Yeah. yeah, you can see the mains going, this is the mains um, frequency. What's that? What's that? This, is the, the, this is mains, they're connected to the mains electricity. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, mains, the power socket. Yeah, they're not doing this, but they're connected. This is a, this is very, this is, this is, um, this is a, this is a person um, touching a washing machine. Okay. And the washing machine was not well earthed. Okay. Um, and then it picked it up and it shocked it. So that's single lead? Single lead. This is an RV tip to ring. <laughs> well, this is characteristic of... Very high frequency. Good, this is good contact with mains. Yeah. Okay? Good contact with mains. Okay? The frequency is very, very regular. Yeah. yeah. So That's this patient, 50 or 60 hertz. So this patient said that they were touching the washing machine. This patient must have been doing more than touching the washing machine. <coughs> this patient was sitting on the washing machine. He was hugging it. Yeah, it was hugging the washing machine, right? It was going past this lead. I don't know what was going on. Anyway, what about this one? Atrial lead, ventricular lead, far field. This guy's got some, 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 some SVT going on. Some patients in atrial flutter. Yeah. Yeah? So atrial fluttering. No, it's not atrial fluttering. No, it's my potential. It's not atrial fluttering. It's right. My potential will typically be more kind of fuzzy. If it's atrial flutter, it won't be seen on the ventricular field. Far field TV? Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. It's not. Hopefully not. But I, I made a list of all the things that cause inappropriate therapies. SVT, T wave oversensing, DMO, P wave oversensing. You can see P waves on your RV leads. Uh -huh. Is the RV what? lead actually taking from tip to coil? That's when, when you have Correct. the coil saddling the tricuspid. Yes. So on a Boston device, they use an integrated bipolar lead, yeah, so they have no ring electrodes, so they send from the tip to the coil. Mm. The, car, the coil is at the, uh, the, the, the tricuspid. The, yeah, the coil is very close to the tricuspid valve here, okay? So we're seeing, we're picking up the flutter signals. So the patient is in AV block. This patient is in AV block with a pretty slow ventricular rate here, here, and here. And we're detecting the atrial rates, the P waves in between, okay? So if you use an integrated bipolar, so that's a tip, no ring, and a coil, it sends to put, you need to make sure you're not seeing any P wave signals on the uh, on that coil. On the, on the tip. But how come it diagnosed SVT? He has high rate in the atrium. Where's the SVT uh, determination well, I mean, algorithm? Wait, it went to VF. Hmm? It went into the VF zone. We have the no discriminators on. No discriminators. Okay. Also, you were shocked. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If the RV lead dislodges as well and moves up, then then then, then potentially this can happen as well. Okay. Uh, if you go back to the secure sense channel, secure sense would say fast, 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 and slow, 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 slow. 
So secure sense won't save him from the shock. Correct. Mm. They won't save him from the bradycardia that he's got. But, but from secure sense. Oh, yeah. That's something yeah, it won't save from the bradycardia. Secure sense will <laughs> still see. Pick up this. Okay. Yeah, but, but in between, it will pick up the ones in between. Well, these flutter waves, yeah. well, see, it depends how big those flutter waves are. It's pretty, pretty up to the them. This gain is pretty increased. These are pretty small. These are smaller than secure sense. You say that potentially, potentially, potentially. secure sense may not see the yes. from the top, but it may. Yeah. I, well, I have examples of the lead, an RV lead that is displaced across the tricuspid valve. It's picking up AF. Yeah. My patient's going at 300 beats a minute in his atrium. The a ventricular channel is going at 300 beats per minute. So it's saying, okay, it's the air. A secure sense that coils can doesn't pick up the AF. It only picks up the uh, only picks up the ventricular signal and the health therapy. And it's a complete just the lead was like this. So it depends. I mean, if it's more organised like this here, this signal might be a bit bigger and it could happen. I haven't seen it yet, but it could happen. Okay. A channel, RV channel, far field channel. What's going on here? The uh, EMI. So it's either. No, no, the EMI would be on both channels and on the other channel more. Well, it's lead, 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 lead problem. If it's a lead problem. If if you've got it on far field, if you've got noise on far field, and on the near field, you would expect to see it on the A as well. Yes. Yeah, if it's coming from the outside, right? But the A is clean. Because this is the most sensitive channel, right? Well, yeah. this is the most sensitive, this is the second most sensitive. So this is the lead? This is a broken lead. Fracture? This is a broken lead. This is a fractured lead. And it's a really... Yeah, it, and it's sense amplifier. It's, it's knocking out the sense amplifier, right? It's, it's, it's saturated here. So we get a little bit of low frequency here, so you could look at it and go, I mean, that looks like DMI, right? Okay, this is a, potentially... Um, but, but, uh, but, but overall, we see there's an issue here. So this is a lead that's pretty well damaged, okay? And, it, and it's, a bit, it's a bit of a problem lead as well, because we're involved in the low-voltage circuit. This is the low-voltage circuit here, the RV, and the high-voltage circuit. So this is low-voltage, basically. This is high-voltage and shock, okay? So this is the coil can, yeah? So this is the coil can cable. This is the tip to ring cable. The, the, the two different cables. The two completely different cables. This is on the inside of the lead. This is running around the in tubes around the outside. But they're talking to each other. So, yeah. That's, that means it's totally through and through. There could be significant damage inside this lead. And the cables are touching. So the low voltage and the high voltage is touching. So who is the inner and what is the Inside, in the middle, is the is going to the tip. That goes to the tip, and then surrounding it are. So this is a multi-lumen lead. So you have tubes within a tube, rather than He's rather than coaxial. The inner ones are the pacing. Or inner the ones pacing. Outer shock. Outer is shock and the ring electrode. Yeah. So it kind of looks like um, like this. So a, a, a defib lead or a, or a multi-electrode lead would look like that. There. This is the tip running in the most protected, and then that would be, this would be RV coil, uh, this would be SVC maybe, and that would be ring, in separate lumens within the, within the insulation material. Oh, goes inside that, yeah. Inside so the we oh, oh, what's that? So, so the, 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 the big problem with this is, this is kind of like, probably, a, probably want to admit this patient, if you see this, you probably want to admit this patient. You certainly want to consider bringing this patient in um, because when you have low voltage and high voltage communicating. We'll have to go. Okay, no problem. We have a meeting at this point. Okay. Join me very nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So when, when we have these two talking to each other, and we call this uh, synchronous artifacts, so artifacts synchronous on here and on here, okay, we can touch it. If you deliver a shock here, it will. It will come down the RV coil and go back up the low voltage cable. That's a problem. The near field is actually That's a problem. taken from tip to lead. Yes. The far field is taken from coil. tip to coil. Coil to can. Coil to can. Coil to can. Yeah. Coil to can. RV coil to can. You can program it, but typically it's RV coil to can. Normally it's RV coil to can, right? So we've got communication of RV, the low voltage and high voltage. This is a bad situation. This is very damaging. You need to fix it. You need to probably take because it's, it's trying to detect VF. The other thing is, secure sense is not going to protect you, right? 
But because yeah. because this is fast, this is fast. They correlate. Okay, this is bad. So even secure sensor can protect you. But this normally happens. Uh, normally, you will see precursors to this way back in time. You know, like the heart failure decompensation. Normally, you'll see this will happen first, and the secure sensor will be fine. Then, if you leave it too long, and just leave it and ignore it, then you may end up with a situation like this. Okay. All right. Here's a quick, uh, quick case study. This has nothing to do with uh, Amber. It's just about noise. Right? We're talking about noise. The patient was walking his dog in a field. That's not the patient or the dog. That's just a picture from Google. Okay. Uh, the patient was walking his dog in a field. He was pre syncable and he noticed there was a sign in the field. Okay. So this is how he presented to his consultant. Uh, and then the consultant sent me this electrogram. This is not an electrogram from an, an Amber device. It's an electrogram. Okay. So, man in a field with a dog with that sign in the field. And that's this very, That's a very regular, high frequency interference. But it's not on both leads. Yeah. It's on the RV. It's on the RV, this is the A. Mm -hmm. Is it the pacemaker? This is a... Um, ICD. This, yeah, this is a... Um, no, this is a CRTP. CRTP, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't shot. It was not shot. Um, but yeah. <laughs> The voltage is coming through the body to one limb and leaving through the other. So coming up here, going out here. Yeah. yeah, coming from down. Could the be. same way as Could the be. that. Could be. I mean, that would be unusual. We, you know, if we, when we put high voltage cables in the ground, we insulate them quite well, right? Yeah. You've yeah. got a lot of rubber around it, right? And, and it's deep. deep. It's, no, you have the whole earth yeah. to dissipate. Yeah. And his dog's okay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> The dog didn't walk along and like that, fall over. His hair cracked. Right? <laughs> so, so, so this is what the this is what the consultant is like. Is it picking up the name's electricity? Electromagnetic field. Yeah, the electromagnetic field. But why is it not picking up? Why would it not be picking up in the atrial channel? Yes, it's, it should probably pick it up in the atrial channel. And he's got yeah. shoes on, right? He's got his boots on. Exactly. So he's insulated. So unless he was walking around barefoot Even and the ground was really wet, yeah, it's almost, yeah. th that's a unicorn, right? Yeah. Could happen. This is a unicorn, right? So this is nothing to do with EMI. This is this is the device that's making this. What is that? Mm. What? Uh, device malfunction? Some sort of device malfunction? So this is minute ventilation sensor. <laughs> minute. Uh, minute. Yeah. So where? This is it the different. So well. So they movement of the little bit. No, no, no. Going to be very regular. No, so, that, so Boston have a sensor called minute ventilation and it injects current between the tip of the lead and the can, okay? And it measures resistance across this circuit here, right? So it's measuring that resistance, That's okay? like the optical. No, 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 no. It's so that it can detect when you breathe, your respiration rate, okay? All right, so the center current from here to here, and if I breathe in... More air. High impedance. Breathe out, less air. Low impedance. So you get up, uh, impedance going up, impedance going down, impedance going up, impedance going down. So now you can work out the ventilator rate of patients. Okay? Yeah? But you have to inject a little bit of current into the patient. And the patient doesn't feel it, right? It's a typical thing, right? So this is the current being injected in to work out what his respiratory rate is. He's walking, the accelerometer says he's walking. So now the sensor, the minute ventilation sensor, the respiratory rate sensor says, let's work out what, how fast his heart is, uh, his breathing is going. So then we can increase the intensity or decrease the intensity of breathing. You can see something on the mark. Yeah, well, it does, it says VT. No, I mean, the device is doing something yeah. active. So it should see it's doing yeah. something. So that you can see this with a Boston device with someone else's lead. So they put an advisory out on it last uh, in January, February this year. Okay? So about this. Okay. There is an advisory on this here. You can look it up on the FDA website or the MHRA. You put the Boston name with the Boston Boston lead. can. Boston lead. Anyone else's lead. No, yeah. any, with a Boston lead, then it doesn't do it. Okay? Alright? But the patient had an arrest. The patient was, yeah, the patient was sinkable. Yeah. The patient was, uh, well, pre sinkable. Yes. When I say pre sinkable, I think he was crawling around on the floor going along. <coughs> he has a point. He was okay. Well, he has a point. <coughs> he does. If this is what the machine was doing, why was the patient Why? Yes. Because he's got no underlying rhythm. Yes. Heavy block. Heavy block. Heavy block. Heavy block. Heavy block. Heavy block. Yes, but the, the, the device should have, oh, the device sort of detached. 
So the device actually interfered to measure something, and while measuring, detected its own measurement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great, yeah. Anyway, weird stuff. Perhaps. Although that's not that weird. That's happened. Okay. Um, there's a, this is a far field channel. This is a diatonic device. Far field channel, near field channel. The device is detecting VF. This is the device charging to deliver a shock VF. It's going to shock the patient here. We have noise, low frequency noise. This here? High frequency, low amplitude noise on the far field. That's okay, yeah, that's normal. You see this kind of all the time on various channels. If you if you make the gain high enough. Yeah. But what's uh, so this is the, this is not a sensing channel, this is a sensing channel. <laughs> this is no this is the, this is deep in the R V. So, so what so this is the this is an R wave, yeah? Yeah. R wave, R wave. So that's an R wave, that's an R wave, that's an R wave. But the device is picking up this. Calling it VF. It's picking three R wave. Three R wave. Well, there's only one R wave. Look, there's only one R wave. Yeah, but T waves. T waves. T waves and U waves. Well, T waves and U waves. Yeah, he has a point. He has got a point. How difficult is it to see a U wave on an ECG? It is difficult, but but very difficult sometimes. Yeah. Very difficult, but the intervals are quite big. It's nearly up to half the RR intervals. So these are big U waves, big spiky U waves. Mm. Ever seen a spiky U wave? No. No. Ever seen a really spiky T wave? Like yes. really spiky. Yes. Yeah. yeah? Is that R wave over counting with T wave over sensing? Double counting? Mm -hmm. No. We've already seen this once before. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that was a fraction. A fraction lead yes. in the RV. Yeah. Okay. So when it contracts. This is normal. This is the actual R wave. Mm -hmm. Then the contraction happens. The lead goes like that. Yeah. Bangs on itself. Sense, sense. VF shock. Okay. So this is. But it could be. A, could be a U wave. It's a unicorn, though, right? <laughs> so you're very. People are very good. People who work in cardiology are very good at, at, at going at finding unicorns. Right. But normally it's just normal stuff. We're usually used to the pressure diagnosis, so we always think, yeah. what could it be? What could it be? Yeah, yeah. Rather than what, what it is. is. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah. So this is just, and and you know, and the cycles are changing a bit. The U wave, the T wave, is stupid a little bit. A few milliseconds here and there. You would expect it to be more consistent if these were real T waves. Okay. <coughs> so this is a, a distal fracture. Right. No, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Mm. Sometimes, uh, so the people who were looking after this patient wanted to change the maximum sensitivity of the device. That's not mm. going to help. Mm. Got a broken lead. Change the lead. Don't change sensitivity. Change the lead. Correct. Okay. So that's fractures and sensing and la da 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 da. So now we're going to move into a little bit of discrimination on our devices, right? So how our device will um, our devices will SBT discriminate? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to test you, right? Rhythm interpretation. You're all cardiologists, so it should be straightforward, right? And then I'll show you the algorithm of what happens. So this is um, an Abbott. This is Abbott's SVT discrimination program in a dual chamber mode. Okay. So these are dual chamber discriminators. Um, our discriminators act all the way up to the VF zone from the bottom of the VT zone, not into the VF zone. Okay. And you can see that on this panel here, where the red light is. Up. SVTs. So anything up to the VF. Can be classified as a supraventricular tachycardia. Okay? Yep. Happy? Sorry, you mean the have the SVT covering the VT and the VT2? Yeah. That's normal? That's normal. All the way up to the VF side. So we stop SVT discriminating at VF. Okay? Okay? So that's important because if you had a young patient you, and you were programming a low VF side, you might want to push the VF side so you get SVT discriminate, right? Okay, so. Um, so this is our algorithm, but we'll just inject the rhythm into it. Let's see what happens. So that rhythm there is, don't complicate it. It's it looks like VTAC. It looks like VTAC. It starts suddenly. <laughs> it looks different. Yeah. Um, there's probably, I can't it's regular, see. It's it, monophasic. It doesn't look like there's any P waves, retrograde P waves in there. So it's VA dissociation, yeah? Yeah, more of it. So, so what, does, what does our algorithm do with this? Our algorithm will do this. 
You've done a bomb here, it says, if there are more V's than A's, it treats it, and that's it. Well, Does. Too easy. No further. Well, the discrimination is that. Yeah, that's and it goes. It goes to say if ventricular rate is greater than atrial rate, deliver therapy. That's some sort of a PR logic. Yeah, we might use that name, but yeah. <laughs> More V than A equals VT, which is true, right? Yeah. Unless your atrial down the sensor. Okay. So if you're atrial, you need to have good atrial sensing, right? Okay, right. More V than A deliver therapy. Okay, so that gets therapy easy. This rhythm. So we'll inject this into the into the like so, so, so there are lots of A's and not many B's. Yeah. So there are more A's than B's. And if you had to describe this to a, you know, uh, an F1, do you have the F ones here? You're, you're very very yeah. new doctors. What do you call them? F one. F one. Yes. F one. The new ones from school, yes. straight from school. Yeah. So if you had to describe this rhythm to an F one, it's irregularly It's irregularly irregular. Yeah. 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 Irregularly irregular. Lots of A's, not many B's. Okay. So we we'll inject that into into the algorithm. So we have more A's than B's. So it goes into this, so it starts up, so it says, okay, if I have more A's than B's, I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at what the morphology looks like. Morphology looks narrow, looks like sinus rhythm, something coming through the AV node. And then we look at interval stability, which is how irregular it is. So that looks, okay, so we have more A's than B's. It's, it looks the same as something coming through the AV node, and uh, it's irregularly irregular. The device says, don't treat it, don't treat it, hold off therapy, okay? Both have to say, both have to indicate VT, okay? So it would have to look different to this, and it would have to be regular to get treatment, okay? Yeah? Which could happen. You could have more A's than B's, yeah? But it's also VT. Because if this AF patient went into VT, yeah. he's still an AF, A is more than B, the device goes, okay, A more than B, morphology looks different, that looks regular, treat it. Okay? Right? That's how the logic works in this device, and, and, and all of this is programmable, but very, very rarely would you need to change it, okay? The as it is, comes out of the box. So out of the box settings on our SVT discriminators will get you around about 1% inappropriate shock rate. That's pretty, that's pretty that's acceptable, right? So I don't know, when, I don't know if when you consent patients, you say to patients, well, did some patients ask, will I get an inappropriate shock? So what do you tell them? What number do you give them? You have a 10%, 20%, 30%, huh? Don't give, Don't give a number, yeah. Just to reassure the patient. Just reassure them, yeah. Well, you can reassure them. This is low, it's low likelihood, okay? Okay, uh, this rhythm. Sinus tachycardia. Explain it to the, to the F1. He's regular. Uh, he's, uh, he's regular. He's in visa. He uh, has a corresponding uh, yep. R wave. Narrow. Narrow, yeah. Gradual increase in rate. Yeah. Yeah. Warm up, cool down. Gradual increase in rate, up or down. So going on this here. A equals B. Yeah. It looks like it's coming through the AV node. So this is what the, it's exactly what the device does. So it uses like your logic, right? That you're using. So I'm even guiding you towards it, right? So V equals A. Looks at the morphology. Does it look the same? Yes. And it, and it, by the way, the device constantly updates this template. So it updates the template every three hours. So every three hours, it goes, okay, I want a, I want a new morphology template. Okay. So it's constantly updating it, but sometimes these things change. The morphology says SVT, the rhythmia onset, so what we, what we, what we use here is that uh, it's actually, we'll, we'll, yeah, so we look for an increase in rate, small increase in rate, um, but also we want to see which chamber is driving the tachycardia. So it has something called chamber of onset. Okay, so the, a, the rate is going up like this here, um, okay, and then it says, is it the A or is it the B that drives this? Okay. With sinus tacky, you won't get a jump in rate, okay? You'll just gradually increase. So the device will say SVT. We have sudden onset off. We have sudden onset off. Well, we have chamber of onset on, and in chamber of onset, there is a sudden onset element, okay? So you can imagine if you had a, let's see, uh, this rhythm here. Where's all the EPs? Science rhythm, science rhythm, science rhythm, science rhythm, something else, something else, something else. I'll put the arrows on them. Yeah, and it's in V1, like AVNRT. AVNRT, right? This is an AVNRT, right? Yeah? What started the AVNRT? 
Uh, so the 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 premature beat. A premature, a premature beat. atrial beat, yeah? Yes. P, uh, PAC, right? Yes. So how does, so let's go back to the algorithm. 